All right. Hey, everyone. How's it going? All right. Thanks for being here. Let me know if everything is correct. It's been quite a while since I last did a live stream. So hopefully, in terms of tech, everything is working correctly. All right. All right. So hey, everyone. Hey, thanks for being here on this random Friday. All right. Hope you're having a nice day. Okay, so basically I got a bit of work that I wanted to do, so I figured I might as well do it on a live stream. So let's do this. I'm basically going to try to do a weapon attachment system. Uh, let me just hide the background. All right, so basically got a weapon and I want to modify the attachment. So modify the stock, the barrel, the scope and so on. So it should be a fun system. Okay, so let me... Just look at my to-do list, everything seems fine, and okay, right, so I'm going to be building this out, and feel free to ask any questions, and I'll try to keep answering, keep looking at chat and doing everything. Okay, right, so for the first task that I want, I really want to just handle rotating the weapon, so that should be a fun and easy one. So let's start trying to make this, so a weapon attachment system, start off by making a basic script scripts folder and inside let's do it same name and attach it all right stream quality is only 480 not 1080 is it is it for everyone because at least on my end it should be looking on the stream health it says that it's healthy so Okay, so maybe there's a, maybe it just takes a while. All right, okay. All right, let's do this. And yep. All right, I'm glad that it's looking good. Okay. So first of all, let me just make a void update. And on update, let me test input, get mouse button. Uh, no, just mouse button. Basically, first of all, I just want to rotate the weapon. So let's see. Think about local singletons using SOs. You mean like the the Ryan Hippon script one object talk? I think that one is interesting and definitely very, very good when it comes to making a designer friendly workflow. But personally for me, I prefer using code. So for me, I don't really use it, but yeah, if you do, definitely go ahead. And for those of you who don't know, let me just put up the link. It's actually a really great, uh, uh, it was Ryan Hippel, I think that was his name. Scriptable objects. That was it. The scriptable object game architecture. So, if you don't know about it, definitely go watch that talk. Really great. Definitely a very interesting use case for scriptable objects and how to design your games and all those kinds of things. Stream be uploaded. Yeah, this is going to be. At least I think I put on the settings. Uh, yeah, it does have DVR. So, yep, this will be recorded for afterwards. All right, okay, so up here, um, trying to remember how do I get the the mouse position or the mouse delta, I think that was it. Yeah, I think that was it, so private vector, is this a two or a three? This is a three. For the last mouse position, and... Vector 3 for the mouse delta. Take the last mouse position minus down. Let's just do a debug down log just to see what this says. Just on the tab. New input system is easier. Yeah, probably. I mean for me when I when I make some quick prototypes, I always start with the with the legacy input system just because I'm so used to it, so it's just so automatic. But yeah, definitely that one is Quite a bit. Oh, right, I'm not updating. Are you from Portugal? Yep, yes I am. Uh, right, so over here I need to update, so the last mouse position equals input dot mouse position. All right. Spider on your back. Wow, that's scary. <laughs> Let's hope not. Uh, right, so as I move... Yep, okay, that does work, and moving on the X and on the Z. All right, great. So let me grab the weapon. So we serialize field, transform for the weapon transform. 
So starting this one, and basically I want to modify the Euler angles, and I need to think how do I modify it. Let me go back over here. So on the weapon, where do I got this weapon? So for rotating, do I want? Yeah, probably want the local, but yeah. So I want to rotate. So that's on the Y, and then a little bit on the X. All right. Okay. So. Uh, so for the so for the x is going to be the mouse delta dot y and mouse delta dot x and then zero so something like this but obviously for, uh, rotate speed let's put it something really small otherwise it's going to be pretty massive so let's see is it not unity or another planet what <laughs> Thoughts about Unity AI? I think they, I think it is really interesting. The things that I saw behind closed doors at GDC, they all look very, very interesting. They're definitely going about it the right way, I would say. So I'm definitely very excited to see how that comes. The most important thing is really how they're focusing on, on owning their entire data set. So that way, as a game developer, you don't have to be worried about being. Um, you don't have to worry about being sued over anything because of, because they don't own the the underlying data set or something. So the fact they're focusing on that is actually super useful. So I do think that is going to be quite nice. Uh, oh, did I make the local or angles? But why is it, did I not do? Because it is rotating in a strange way. Okay, that's on. Just focus on the, on the Y first. Alright, make a video on full body FPS controller. I would encourage you to to use the the uh oh, what's it called? The star assets. I would definitely advise you to use those. I mean there's no point in reinventing the wheel, or at least open those and see how they've implemented. For example, on the third person shooter controller, for that one I pretty much refactored that third person controller in order to make my own. And yeah, so I would say definitely do that instead of trying to build it on your own. That is probably the best way. Oh, is this not... Okay, that's on. Why is it? Oh. Right. So I actually need to update it afterwards. Yeah, right. I'm not updating every frame. Yeah, I thought that was strange. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you, Code Might. Yep, that was exactly it. It was not updating on every frame. So like this. Yep, now it does rotate exactly as intended. Uh, all right. Okay, good. So basically, just something like this. Obviously, cannot go way into that one. So let me just put the background. I know that one is going to rotate a little bit, but you know, let's see over here. So I need to push it a bit more like this, and just make it a a bit bigger, just so that the background isn't visible. All right. So let's just copy this transform, copy the component, and paste it like this. Okay, great. All right. So with that, yep, there you go. I can rotate them like that. Let me also apply the other one. So over here, the mouse delta dot y. Except for that one, I really want to limit it. But let's see how much do I clamp it. Sorry, since I have issue with the UI, I can't click on anything. What do you mean click on anything? With a first person controller, you're not supposed to be 
clicking on anything, so I'm not sure what you're trying to do. Basically, in first person, shouldn't be... Oh, hey, new member. Hey, thank you, Slayer Dees. Thank you. That's nice. I forgot that this... Every time I do a live stream, I forget that <laughs> these pop-ups exist. Um, yeah, so basically, if you're using an FPS controller, then you have... At some point, you have to unlock the mouse if you actually want to click some buttons. So you have to go into cursor, and you have to set the lock state. And by default, you're probably going to have it as locked, which means you can't see the cursor, so you can't click on anything. So you need to revert this one back into none so that you can actually see the cursor in order to be able to click on menus. So that's pretty much the only thing you should need to do. As long as the cursor is unlocked, it should be able to click on any buttons. So yeah, I would assume that's the only issue. Uh, right, okay, so this one is good, except I don't want the weapon to rotate way too much, just a little bit. So let's see what kind of rotation is this. Uh, let me go into the weapon. All right, this. Oh, it's when I click on elsewhere. Okay, sure. Yeah, that works. Okay, so I only want to go minus 15 to plus 8. Yeah, minus 10 to plus 8. So don't want to go way too much. So methf.clamp. Methf.clamp. You clamp for the float rotation y min. Uh, what did I say? Minus 7? Minus 7x. Rotation y max. Let's say on plus 10, so clamp the mouse down to y between the rotation y min and the rotation y max. So this is going to be the point for the rotation y. And then I apply the rotation y. Actually, it's rotation x. I don't know why I was calling it y. Uh, yep, so over here, let me put this one. Always rename your variables if something changes. Definitely always remember to do that. Okay, all right. Hey, Super Chat, thank you. Thanks for featuring my Aston Yard Ted 10 free assets. Oh, that's awesome. Which one did you make? Nice, all right. <laughs> I always go through it and always pick some interesting Aston. There's usually a lot of competition. So if you made something and I select, that means it was pretty good. So, all right, congrats, nice. Uh, okay, so this one. It's a bit... Did I do lerp instead of... No, I did clamp. Oh, right, never mind. Yeah, I'm doing it wrong. I need to clamp the maximum, not the thing that you actually modify. So, yeah, it's actually not going to be like this. No, I actually take this. I take the Euler angles.x and I put it in down. And then do a new vector 3 with this one. Then the weapon transform local dot y weapon transform local dot z. Okay, so basically on that one, by the mouse down to dot y. And okay, I think that should be it. All right. How did you learn Unity? By yourself making things on your own or from some YouTube channels? Well, when I started learning, that was in 2012. So back then, there really weren't any... Uh, YouTube channels, so yeah, I had to learn by myself pretty much. That was, it was tricky. Yeah, lots of trial and error, trying to search things, look for C sharp tutorials, things on Stack Overflow and all those kinds of things. So yeah, it was definitely much trickier than it is nowadays. Nowadays you can just look at tons and tons of tutorials and you will find tons of stuff. But yeah, back then I had to do it pretty much the hard way. Lots of trial and error, reading documentation and so on. So yeah, definitely tricky. Definitely things are much easier nowadays. Okay. Why was this one not going at... Is this one... Is it the issue? Yeah, I'm guessing this is going to be the issue with the... Yeah, the alerts. Yeah, they are They are manual. So, yeah. Thank you so much for the super chat. And thank you so much, new channel member. That's nice. Uh, right, so basically my issue right now... Speaking of making a horror game, but don't know how to model. Well, that's where assets come in, which is the same thing for me. I also don't know how to model, so the way I do it is I use lots and lots of assets. Thankfully, nowadays, using assets is super... Yeah, that's going to be the tricky thing. Ah, crap. I hate this. <laughs> uh, damn it. Uh, yeah, so nowadays, I would definitely encourage you to use some assets. Actually, that's part of the reason why, why I'm doing this, is because the... The Cinti store, they've got a, a sale, and basically the pack that I'm using here for the weapon attachment system, 
is the one that is going to be on, yep, it's this one, the military pack, which is going to be 70% off next Monday. So, did I call it Cinti Store? Is that the link? I don't remember. Uh, nope. Damn it. Smack.co. Yeah, so basically, yeah, that's why I'm doing this in order to use some assets because, yeah, I also don't know how to model. So for me, yeah, I need to use some assets in order to be able to do some interesting things. But thankfully, nowadays, you can find assets on all kinds of things. So yeah, definitely buy it and use it to turn your vision into reality. Okay, so the issue over here is that as I go up, as usual, always problems with Euler angles. So it goes up and it snaps all the way down. So how do I do this? Well, I need to basically uh, increase it by 360, maybe. Maybe that works. So if I go 360F, minus N, 360F, what's that? With this, it should be like that, I hope. Except no, except that one is going to be... Ah, crap. It's actually going to be quite annoying. How do you keep focused to finish a game? Basically, you focus on using a nice to-do list, so you always work from a plan, so you define a plan, define the kinds of things that you want to do, and you just do it day by day, little by little every day. That's pretty much it. There's no secret answer. You just have to try doing things, do a tiny bit every single day, and yeah, just keep at it day over day. <laughs> That's the best thing that I can say, is that the most important thing is really consistency. So it doesn't matter if you work non-stop 12 hours a day, that doesn't really matter. What matters is working a tiny bit every single day for months on end. That's pretty much it. Yep, your game is the sum of 1,000 small success. That is definitely it. Uh, okay, so this... Ah, oh, crap. I always hate working with rotations and things always the issue uh okay so how do i fix this um okay let me think Looks, uh local oiler angles x equals this guy so i guess i can do if this one is bigger than it's gonna be 180 yeah, I guess if it is bigger than 180, then I can do minus equals 360. And with that, like this, it should hopefully be working. So now I no longer need this, I don't think. So basically, if that one goes above 180, so if it goes in like 359, then it's going to subtract, so it's going to go into the negatives. So hopefully this should work. Let's see. I would ask ChatGPT to get some raw code. Yeah, actually, that could possibly work. But, yep, there you go. Finally figured it out. So, it's always the issues with going by 360, then it snaps back into zero and so on. That is always super tricky. But, yeah, thankfully, it does work. So, I can rotate in one direction, another one. Only the axis is a bit odd. So, I need to, yeah, rotate it on different. But, yep, there you go. That's exactly what I wanted. So, I want to be able to rotate the weapon, maybe rotate it a little bit, rotate a tiny bit up and down, and just like that. Okay, great. Let me just increase the rotation speed by a tiny bit, just like this. All right. Very reassuring to see that even highly experienced apps don't just code everything perfectly the first time. Yep, that's exactly it. I mean, remember that when you see one of my videos, what you see in the final video is the final thing after all the trial and error. So yeah, before I record the video, I definitely go through this process. I get a ton of issues in order to figure out what works and what doesn't. So yeah. Just because you see the final video and everything goes well does not mean that I absolutely did it the first time, no. <laughs> uh, right. Okay, so this part is working. So that was just the basics, just trying to make it rotate, so that's fun. Okay, so now let's actually do the proper attachment system. So let me just see my notes, because I was thinking about the design. So basically, I want some clickable buttons, and I want them to be world buttons so that I can then... I guess the thing is, do I attach them inside or not? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, I guess I could put them inside. Maybe try doing that. So let's put inside, put a canvas, make it world space, maybe something like this. So I'm going to have canvas and inside I'm going to have a UI button. Okay, so let's put it really tiny 
and I'm going to want it to rotate to face the camera. Uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, even that is way too big, just get rid of the sprite. Okay, so basically I want a button that is going to be facing towards the camera, so this is going to be the button for, uh, what am I going to call it? Uh, this is going to be for the barrel button. Okay, something like this. Let's put it just a tiny bit. Okay, and inside for the text, let's say barrel, put it in bold, really tiny. Disable that and that. Where's the text? Is it on the other side? Nope. Oh, why did the font vanish? That's odd. Did I not import the Text Mesh Pro thing? Okay, that's on. So why did Text Mesh Pro not import the essentials? That's strange. Okay, apparently. Oh, never mind. The window just showed up on my other screen. That's why I didn't see it. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that helps. All right. Okay, so let me select the font asset. One of these two. Oh boy, got some errors on the thing. You create the game with JavaScript. I mean, this is Unity, but yeah, I guess in the past I have made some games using JavaScript. That was a... Uh... Actually, I was trying mostly was with PHP back when I wanted to make a a online game kind of like Dark Galaxy. I really enjoyed playing that one. That was really fun, really interesting. So, so yeah, I've definitely tried that. Recode Monkey sounds different. Well, that's probably because I'm in I'm doing live streams, so I'm not. My voice is definitely different. Why is this guy not showing? Did I? Yeah, probably. Yeah, it messed up the sprite asset. Okay, so let me. Try doing... Oh crap, I can't, <laughs> I can't click under the people, so let me just get rid, make new button, barrel, button. Yeah, the issue with the Text Mesh Pro not showing up. Alright. Why well, have you been a game dev? I've been using Unity since 2012. And I've been programming since I was about 10, so... Definitely been doing this for quite a long time. Uh, right, let me just... Grab the button. Actually, ah, crap. <laughs> Sorry, I can't read the messages right now. I'm trying to. Yeah, because the. Yeah, because I should not rotate this guy. No, instead, just rotate the barrel thing. And just need to make it a lot smaller than this. And on the barrel button. Okay, make it quite a bit more like this. Point two, something like this. Alright, okay. So finally, ah oh crap, I offset it. No, put it down there. This one. Okay, alright, so that was quite a bit tricky actually. Because of the thing. Alright, okay. Hey, thank you for the super chat, Tyler. Uh, I was wondering if you have are planning to make an updated Unity Analytics video. Yeah. Yeah, there is a... I did cover analytics and there's a lecture there, but yeah, that lecture was quite a while ago and in the past few months they completely refactored it. So yeah, I definitely need to do that one right now because I haven't yet looked into how the new analytics works, what exactly changed. I assume quite a lot of things changed, so yeah, I'll definitely... So yeah, that's definitely part of the plan, just don't know when I'll be able to do it. That's always the it's always the tricky thing, especially with that course, which is, should I spend my limited time on updating old lectures or covering new tools? That is always the tricky question that I always have trouble answering. So yeah, definitely part of the plan since that one is pretty much outdated. So yeah, that lecture, hopefully soon I'll be able to update at least just that one. Uh, okay, so look at camera. Let me just make this one super simple one on late update and over here on let's do transform dot forward and I never remember if it's the forward or not forward camera dot main transform dot forward I'm pretty sure it's reversed I'm pretty sure that's how it's supposed to be okay it's gonna be an escape from Tarkov yep pretty much that is the one that I used 
as reference in order to figure out which one I should do. So, yep, that's definitely the kind of thing that I'm going for. All right. Did the Kitchen Chaos course and want to know if I can turn it into a co-op game. Yes, I mean, the, the second part of that game, second part of that course is on taking that game and converting it into multiplayer. So yes, if you haven't done it yet, definitely go ahead and follow the the free multiplayer section. So follow that one and yep, you can make it into a co-op game. All right. Okay, so basically, yep, it is working except apparently I did want the opposite. So now reverse, but just facing like that. And this one also needs to be quite a bit smaller. So let's put it maybe on point 0.3, point 0.1. I'm going to have to modify all of this. Okay. They're all quite a bit tiny. That's the issue with these. It's kind of hard to scroll in order to be able to find. But anyways, sure. Okay, so that works. All right. Okay, so thanks so much, Tyler, for the super chat. Yeah, thank you. All right. So basically, I got my canvas, and I want and I want to be able to click on this button. So let me go into the definitely going to need to refactor quite a lot of this. I gotta say that writing code once on live stream, it's quite a bit trickier. My brain definitely works much much slower. It's definitely much trickier to do things. So yeah, doing it on live stream complicates things. Can I use your utilities in a game I want to sell on Steam? Yep, feel free to use the utilities in your own games, free or commercial. Yep, go ahead. I hope they help you in your game. Okay, so the barrel button. Let me just... Actually, I just want to test if I can actually click on the button, yes or no. So, on the barrel button, on click, add in listener. And over here, just debug.log in order to barrel. All right. How do you handle dealing with and countering games that are similar to the one you are working on? Uh, the answer is don't worry about it, pretty much. I mean, you can have two people that come up with the exact same uh, design. And even if you do two people that come up with the same design over the building of the game, the final games will be completely different. So yeah, I would say definitely don't worry about it. Unless you're actively trying to make a clone, it it won't come out exactly the same thing. So definitely don't worry about that. If someone has a similar idea, go ahead and make your own. Whatever you do, it is going to end up being quite different. So yeah, don't worry about that. All right, okay, so the button does work. I can select the barrel. Yeah, that's fun. All right, okay, so let me... Uh, okay, so I got the basics. I can rotate, I can do thing, and now the main thing that I want is the parts. Okay, so let's start by making the weapon parts. Okay, new C-sharp script, weapon part SO. Let's go inside, and this one is going to be a script mall object with a create asset menu. And, okay, so for this one, let me see, what do I need for it? Right, I'm going to need a public enum for the part type. This is where I'm going to uh, define all the things. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to have a barrel, then a barrel end, then an under barrel, a stock, a grip, and a magazine. Something like that. Okay, and for the parts, I'm going to make it a public with part type and the part type. And then I guess a public transform for the prefab that I'm going to instantiate. Okay. Why well, select the white theme? Because dark mode burns my eyes. That's pretty much it. If I put this on dark mode, I couldn't stare at it for more than three seconds. So, sorry, but yep, for me, it has to be like that. Scriptable objects. Okay, and inside, let's make a weapon part so. Let's make it a barrel. And actually, let's start with the grip, because that one is probably going to be easier. So start with a grip and let's see all the parts that I got. So we're here seeing all the assets. Can't customize the snow, the scope. Oh yeah. Yeah, I forgot about it, but yeah, definitely gonna be able to customize the scope as well. Yep. Uh, okay, so for the grip, that one should be the easiest one. So this one has 
three separate grips. Okay, so let's start by doing that. What are the names? Grip one, two, three, that's it. Yep, okay. So on this one, let's call this grip one, grip two, and grip three. Okay, now the tricky thing about this kind of system is going to be how do I position them? Yeah, because basically, so the way these assets are set up, so the body is like that, but I actually want the body to be a bit more offset because right now the rotation is a bit strange. So let me grab all of these and try to move them just a little bit, just because, yeah, the body is supposed to be kind of like that. Okay, good. Let me actually move it kind of like this. All right. Uh, okay, so for the body of nice animations to show the chat messages. Yeah, nice. If you want to know, I actually covered it on the... Oh god, I always forget the... <laughs> yeah, I actually didn't notice the message down here. Because there is, you can customize your character on the live stream. Except I don't remember the... Oh god, I always forget this one. So, customize live stream character. Yeah, I don't think that's it. I'm not gonna remember. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> it shows up down here, the link to customize it. I always forget this. This is always the thing that I forget, but yeah. Basically, you can customize your character, and in there, it also showcases all the, all the things that you... Ah, oh, crap. Why can't I remember it? I always forget that one. I always forget. What is it called? Uh, nope. Damn it. Ah, I can't figure it out. Okay, sure. Eventually, it's going to pop up the message down here. So when it does, let's see. Uh, anyways, okay. So I want to modify, start off by modifying that one. So, uh, okay, yeah. Basically, I'm trying to think of how am I going to place the points. So this is going to be, what am I calling it? The grip. So these are going to be the attach points so we put inside attach points put that one on zero and then put the grip is the grip on the position yep and basically essentially where's the grip let me grab a grip this one is the mod a mod a grab a grip put it in there yeah i think that's supposed to be the position let me just get rid of the grip on this one and yep that does work okay right so on the script mod objects, let me assign the prefabs. And actually for the prefabs, I'm going to want, no, oh, I can use them like this one right now. Okay, so let's put grip one, then the grip two, and finally the grip three. Oh, grip three, all right. Okay, so for the weapon itself, let me link up on the weapon attachment system. Let me put another transform for this one is going to be the grip attach point. Great tutorial, thanks. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad the videos have helped you. Okay, so for the grip attach point, okay. And the way that I'm going to, oh. Yeah, player customization tutorial. Yeah, I think that's, is that the link? Draw. Does it work? Nope. <laughs> it's something like that, but yeah, I can't remember exactly what it is. Or maybe... Nope. Nope, or yes. All right, it is. <laughs> All right, yeah. Thank you for your help. Who was it? Weird Sweaty. Yeah, thanks for the help. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Yeah, that is the one. <laughs> I always forget that that link. I really need to add some clickable link somewhere. So anyways, yeah, you can customize your character. And yeah, at the bottom down here, if you want to know how I made this. Yeah, basically this is a transparent TNT window. Then for the characters, they are controlled using some mesh-based animations. And the way that this is interacting with the YouTube API is through an HTTP request from inside Unity. 
And if you want to see more on how I colored, uh, colored all of these random uh, characters, those are pretty much the same code that I used in my game Battle Royale Tycoon. So you can see, you can watch all these tutorials and figure out how all this works and maybe make your own. If you also do some live streams or want to do something fun, yeah, this should help. Okay, right. Uh, okay, so over here, how do I... I was thinking of a private, a dictionary. A dictionary of weapon part so dot part type. And then the transform. So for the weapon part type transform dictionary. Okay, do a new one. And up here, let's do a red void set part. And what part am I going to put? So weapon so dot part type, so the part type. And wait, do I do part type or no? Yeah, because the thing already has the part. So if I just put a weapon part as so, if I just do this one, then I can go into the dictionary on this weapon part as so dot part type. And basically, I'm going to instantiate so transform for the part transform. And I'm going to instantiate, going to the weapon part, instantiate the prefab. Okay. All right. So the weapon part type is this one, but I also need to do some cleanup. So if this one dot contains this key, if it does already contain that key, then I need to destroy that one. So I need to destroy this one dot game object. Okay, so I destroyed that one, I spawned the new one, I put it, and then I just need to actually position it. So over here, let's make a struct, what am I gonna call it? Part type attach point. And I'm going to have a public weapon part so dot part type for the part type, and then a public transform for the attach point transform. And I gotta make this a serializable in order to show up. And up here, make a serialized field. Not serializable. Serialized field of part type attach point. Let's do a list of this one. So part type attach point list. Okay, so this way I can have the list. And then over there, I can, or not for each. Uh, uh, first of all, let me just fill up the array. Okay. <clears throat> All right, hello from Sweden. Hey, nice. What time is it in Sweden? What is it, like plus one, plus two? So it should be around, what, 2 p.m. over there? So that's nice. Uh, okay, so we're here for the part attach point. Let me add one, and I'm going to put it for the grip. And for the grip attach point, it is this one right here. Okay. Actually, that's a good question. Do I put it as a child or not? I'm not sure. 12.47. Oh, so it's really just one hour? Really? Huh. I thought it was a bit more, since Sweden is quite a bit more to the right where I'm in. Yeah, CET. Okay, interesting. All right, so... Uh, let me also make... Yeah, a dictionary of the... Trying to think. Uh, weapon tart... Attach point transform dictionary and over here. Let me make a new one and then do a for each a for each on this guy right here For the part type attach point in the part type attach point list Then I go into this guy and I access it on the part time attach point dot part type and I put it equals to the part time attach point dot the transform Okay, so that way I assign the transform and then down here, I can do a transform for the attach point transform. And on this one, basically, I can grab the transform for the part type, and the part type is going to be this weapon so dot part type. So with that one, I have that one, and over here, dot parent. I can put it as a child of that one, and then put dot local or angles equals vector three dot zero. And same thing for the low composition, also vector 3.0. All right, greetings from Petersburg. All right, nice. Uh, okay, so 
for testing, let me make a simple weapon part SO, weapon part SO, and let's go one and two just for testing. So I get two of them, and then over here on update, let's do so if input get key down, and let's go with the T key. So on T key, set part, and go with the weapon part SO one, and on the Y. Let's go with set part SO2. All right, so let's see that. How can I learn to code in a good way? Well, watch tutorials and more importantly, actually do the things. That's pretty much it. Don't just blindly copy paste code. Actually try to, try to follow things, try to do things. So watch a tutorial, then try to make it on your own, modify the code, see what changes. And yeah, that's pretty much it. There's really no secret for how do you learn how to code? How do you learn how to make games? It really is you just try to do it and then keep on doing it. Okay, I think I forgot one thing. Did I? Yeah, I did sort of forget. Well, I just forgot to... Uh, where's the... What am I clicking on? Oh, is that one spawning two of them? Yeah, because there's the default one over there. Oh! <laughs> okay, that's unintentional. Why did that one... Huh, because whenever I click outside and then click back, it sometimes does something... Oh, look at that. Wow, that's odd. Huh. It kind of like... Why did it reverse? Why did that one go into minus 180? <laughs> Alright, that's strange, yeah. It only... Basically, this is one of those weird bugs that only happens in the editor. Basically, if this was a build... Actually, if it was a build, it would still possibly work because you could always click away. But yeah, basically the issue is with the Delta. So if I click outside and then click there, <laughs> that's funny. Alright, that's not supposed to happen, but sure. Uh, actually, I can... Sort of fix that, can I? By making the... I could clamp the mouse Delta. Except which one is it? I don't know. Anyways, I'll, I'll fix that later. Right now, I really want to... Make sure that this part at least is working, and yep, it is working, so I can swap out. I can click a button, and yep, it does swap out that one. Let's just make the third one, just for fun. So I got that one. Right now, it just based on key input, but yep, that's about it. So the one thing that I do need is to get rid of the one that is on here right away. So this one, just disable it, so right now, there's no grip. Then I click. Said so I don't like coroutines, you use async methods and tasks instead. No, but that is also a valid option. For me, usually I just use basic uh, flow timers. So just count on the time. I've got a, a class that is super useful in my utilities that I use it all the time. And I made a video about it a long time ago. So the function timer. Yeah, so basically this is the, whenever I want to do some time-based logic, I just use a basic flow timer. But yep, if you do like using async and await, then yep, definitely go ahead and do that, because that is pretty easy. What application thought is focus work to fix that? Uh, not really, because the issue isn't that it loses focus, the issue is that it keeps track of the last, uh, the last position. So over here, the last mouse position, so this one grabs the input that mouse position, and when it loses focus, this one stops updating. I don't know, I think this one returns zero. So basically the issues go go out of focus, then you go back into focus, and the input mouse position, the difference between that one and the last one is going to be huge. And for some reason, that is causing that one to flip 180. So that's a bit strange, but yeah. Basically the solution would be just make sure to limit the mouse delta. Just limit it to a certain amount, and that way it wouldn't cause issues on moving normally. And when snapping from a huge distance, it would clamp, so it wouldn't cause problems. So basically that would be the fix. But yeah, right now I really want to just make sure this part is working. And obviously I forgot one thing, but yep. So on the weapon system, gotta put the grip 3. And yep, alright, so the basics is kind of working. There you go, look at that. All of them swapping, nice. Can I use 22 or wait for LTS? Yep, I would say definitely use 22. Nowadays it's the version that I'm always using. So yep, the LTS should be coming out. Where are we? We're at the end of April, right? Yeah, usually the LTS version comes around April. So yeah, I guess the LTS version should be right around the corner pretty much. Uh, okay, so instead of being on things, let's put it based on a button. 
So on this one, that's kind of a tricky thing. I'm going to have to make... Could I use just one canvas? That's a good question. I actually don't know. Would that work? Because multiple canvas is going to make it quite a bit tricky. So for this one, let's call the grip button. And instead of putting the look at, let me see, because I actually don't know if this is going to work or not. Let's try. Put the look at camera on these two instead of on the canvas. And that way I can have just one canvas. Uh, let's see if it works. And look at that. Actually, it does work. All right. Nice. So that's exactly what I want. Okay. So on this one down here, it is not the barrel, but rather the grip. And when I click on it, I want to modify it. So up here, let me grab the button. I'm probably going to eventually refactor this code, separate the UI from the actual weapon logic, but yep. You are the champ, you got me into game dev. Let's start off with programming, now we work out on local web dev. As a front-end view.js. All right, awesome, hey, that's really awesome. <laughs> it's really great how programming is really such a global thing. So yeah, you can start from one area and end up in something completely different. <laughs> so yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I hope you're enjoying your job. That's a great story. Nice. Yeah, JavaScript is one of those things that I, if I had the time, I would love to be able to explore it. I pretty much just know the basics. I know there are so many, tons and tons of JavaScript frameworks. And yeah, I would definitely, that is one area that I would love to research if I can find time. But yeah, congrats on getting into programming, getting a job. That's really awesome. Nice. All right. Okay, so I've got the grip button. And, okay, let me just make this one, so grip button on click, at a listener. And for this one, let me make a function. So, private void change grip. And on this one up here, let's go put that one on the change the grip. Okay. So, on this one, I want to modify the grip. And how do I... Ooh, that's actually, yeah, I'm gonna need, hmm. Yeah, actually a different uh, dictionary. So that one is the attach point, that one is the spawn thing. Hmm. I'm trying to think, do I make different structs or do I put them all on the same one? It's actually a good question, I'm actually not entirely sure. All right, let's put it here and then if needed, I can just refactor it. Okay, so the spawn transform and inside I'm also going to have the weapon part so, weapon part so. Okay, so those are supposed to start off as empty. And on this dictionary, I'm actually going to make it a dictionary of the attached point. But then actually, hmm. Not yet. So I got the attach point and I got the things. Okay, so let me just refactor this because yeah, I think that I probably only need that one, right? So instead of getting that one, put that one on this guy right here, okay? And then get rid of this second dictionary. And now down here, I go into this guy. If this guy contains that part and this guy, no oh crap, and this one dot the spawn transform is not known. If it is not known, then that's what I want to destroy. I want to destroy the spawn transform. Okay, and then you go into the part transform, you spawn a brand new one, all right. Then you go inside this dictionary on that one and on the spawn transform, you put it as that one. Can I modify the return value? Ah, oh crap, I always hate this. It's always annoying. Uh, so what do you call this thing? Part type attach point. Part type attach point equals this guy right here. And then the part type attach point. That's one transform equals that one. I guess you should probably make that one a class instead of a struct. That would probably solve this problem. Anyways, fine. And the attach point point transform. It is going to be this one dot the attach point transform. I put that one on that one, and then I just need to make sure to update this one. Yeah, I think I should probably just make that one a class so that I don't need to worry about copies and so on. But anyways. Okay, so basically like this, now I've got a structure that has all the data that I want. 
So with this basic refactor, hopefully everything should still be working the same. So let's see. After a night shift, shawarma IPA programming stream. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's a very busy day, huh? <laughs> uh, right. What example is no? Yeah, I forgot to assign the grip button. That's not the one. That's the one. The grip button. All right. Okay. I was wondering why did you choose struct over class? Just because usually when it's for groups of data that are only supposed to hold data, for that one usually I just go with. Uh, for that, usually I go with struct just because, just honestly, there's usually in most cases there's there's no reason you can use either one. So yeah, it's really just habit. Whenever I just want to start some data, I just tend to go with that. Anyway, so this is now working, so that's fun. And I just need to put on this one. So I spawn it, I position it, and then on this one for the weapon part. Of so equals this one. So this way I know what weapon is attached to that one. Okay. So now when I change the grip, uh, I guess things I'm going to need an SO for all the lists. Hello there. Hey, both of you. Nice. Thanks for being here. What's your real name? My real name is Hugo. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Yeah, thank you all for being here on this random live stream on this random Friday morning. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Uh, okay, let me make a weapon part list SO. And for this one, I'm going to want to make a scriptable object with a create asset menu. And now inside of it, uh, I'm going to want to want a list of weapon part SO, weapon part SO list. And then basically I want a public list of weapon part SO. Yeah, this one could probably be, yeah, it could be fixed, but I think making it dynamic makes a bit more sense. So get weapon part SO list, and I'm going to take a parameter of type part type like this. So list of weapon part SO, weapon part SO list. Actually, instead of giving it the same name, because that is going to be a bit confusing. So return weapon part SO list, and eventually I'm going to return this one. And I'm going to do a for each on weapon part SO, weapon part SO into weapon part SO list. And if this weapon part so dot part type, if it matches the one that I'm looking for, then on the return weapon part so list, let's add this one and return it. Okay, so this way I've got a nice function to return it. Let's just go into the script of objects and let me make the weapon part so list or list so I guess. So on this one and let's lock this one and add the three grips. Okay, great. So now if I go on to the other one, you ever face loss of data when using public properties within scriptable objects? Uh, no, but then I never use properties, so maybe that's why? Really, do you lose data? That's a bit interesting. Yeah, with assembly definitions. Okay, yeah, I don't know, because for me, when it comes to scriptable objects, I only use them as read-only uh, data containers, so for me, I always make them as public variables. Yeah, over here, I never use any any properties, so I never had that issue. That is definitely very strange, yeah. Can I recommend a fix for third-person shooter animation rigging close to all problem? Well, the solution is use a separate camera. So, kind of like how I did on the on the recent, on the drag racing minigame. Where is this? Why is this so slow? Uh, oh crap, I'm gonna have to, yeah. Ah, crap. So over here, how I made the, there's a camera for the actual game scene, and then there's a separate camera for the UI. So in order to prevent a shooter, oh, actually, only now I know <laughs> you said third person shooter. Yeah, basically I was talking about in first person. So in first person, you use a camera just to run the weapon and the camera to run the thing in front, and then you just stack the weapon, and that way the weapon will never clip through the geometry. In third person shooter, yeah, for that one, you really just, uh, do a raycast in order to find the distance to the wall, and if the wall is way too close, then you basically just use another animation where the character kind of lifts up the weapon. That's pretty much it. So for that one, it would just be based on animation rather than anything more complex. Okay, right. So what was I doing? I was trying to modify that one. So let me go into the weapon attachment system, and when I click on that one, let me just grab a reference to the weapon. What did I call it? 
the weapon part list as so. So the weapon part list as so. And on this one, basically when I click in order to modify the grip, so first I need to know what grip am I using. So for that, let's go into this one on that part type. Can I assume that this one actually exists? Yeah, I think I can make that assumption because this transform dictionary. Yeah, I'm always going to need to add the attach point, so I can actually make the assumption that this one exists, so I don't need to constantly be checking for that one. Uh, okay, so the part type, weapon part is so, part type dot, in this case, that's the grip. So I'm going to grab, so that's the attach point, and then, yeah. And then from this one, I'm going to basically, yeah, check the weapon part is so. So if this one is null, that means there's none. So if so, then I'm going to set part and I'm going to go into the weapon part list so in order to get the weapon part so list and I'm going to pass in a grip. So I'm going to grab the list of grips and from this one, I'm going to grab the very first grip. So if there's no weapon, then it's going to set that one. And if there is one, then int next index. So I'm going to first need to get the part index. So for the part index, I'm going to have to get this guy right here. So it's going to be a list of weapon part so, weapon part so list. So I grab that one, a list of weapon parts from that one. And then I do a index of and try to find the weapon that is currently on there. So that is the current index. So for the next part index, that one, take the part index plus one, do a remainder of the weapon part list. No, not this one. Weapon part as so list. Yeah, I gotta be careful not to mix them both and do that one like that. And the next part index. So I basically go into this one and exit on the next index. Okay, I think that should do it. This one is clicking, so like that. All right, let's see. Uh, what am I doing? What's your opinion on test-driven development? I don't necessarily do test-driven in the sense that I don't normally write tests, but yep, I definitely do find it. I find the logic of focusing on it, worrying about it. I find that to be actually very, oh, this one is locked. Uh, I find it to be very useful to actually think about it. So. Whilst personally, I don't really usually uh, write tests for my games, I definitely do make sure that any code that I write, I try to make it so that it would be possible to test it. So I don't necessarily fully follow test-driven development, but yeah, making sure that your code could be testable, just having that in the back of your mind, that will definitely help you make quite a lot better code. All right, look at that, I can modify the grip. That's cool. Okay, nice. So the barrel, that one's actually going to be the trickiest one. So <laughs> I don't know why I started on that one. Uh, but yeah. All right, so I can modify the grips and let's just add the buttons for the other ones. And actually, yeah, just with that, most of the system might already be working. Nice. Python dev, when I started game dev on your channel, you're like the brackets of my game dev journey. <laughs> That's nice. All right, I'm glad my videos have helped you. That's awesome. That's really cool. Uh, what am I doing? Okay, so I need, so I got the grip button. Let me add one, let's call it the stock button. And the scope is actually going to be quite tricky. So the scope button, like this. The stream available to watch afterwards. Yep, it won't be recording. So yep, afterwards it won't be available. And of course, what I'm doing here, I'm basically making the system for a video. So the full uh, tutorial or showcase video won't be coming out on Monday, I hope. Monday or Tuesday, something like that. So, yep, the the uh, the live stream will be available and the full video will also be available. Okay, so modify the stock and then modify the scope. Okay, that one is a bit too high. Lift it just a bit. All right, good. Uh, okay, so let's try adding all those parts. And right now I know we need this testing code so I can get rid of this. Okay. All right, so that's good. Uh, yeah, set part and change, change rip. I should do it, change part and set, but okay. All right. Thanks for the multiplayer tutorial. Is that how I find you? Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah, multiplayer was a lot of fun. 
searching for it. So, yeah, that's that was it was really fun researching that because I hadn't done multiplayer in many many years. So, yeah, that was great. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Thank you. Uh, okay, let me go up here. Actually, I don't need to modify anything here. So, in order to modify that one, I just need well, first of all, I need the buttons. So the stock and the scope buttons. I need those. Actually, that's a good question. Hmm. Once again, the same question. Do I put them all together? Yes or no? Anyways, for now, let's make separate buttons and maybe I'll add it over here onto my thing. But for now, let's just make different buttons and then see what else happens. Okay, so I got the stock button and I got the scope button. And actually, I'm going to modify that script. But for now, yeah, right, I just need to attach those. So let me go into this guy. And on the part attach point, let's put a ray size of three. So I got the grip, then I'm going to have the stock and I'm going to have the scope. And for the attach points, this is actually where it's going to be tricky. So let me start from this one, go inside this one, make an empty game object, name it the stock, then drag it out. And this way it has the exact same position. Okay, let me put it inside the attach points. And yep, so that's the stock. So I can actually take the stock and drag it inside there and disable it. All right, so that's the stock position. Uh, the other one that I want is the scope. And actually, the scopes are a little bit tricky. Where's the scope? There it is. Oh, no, actually, it's good. I thought the scopes would be with the pivot a bit different, but no. Uh, so let's go inside. This is the scope attach point. So let's go down here to the attach points, put the scope, and drag the scope on there and disable it. Okay, great. <laughs> As I'm adding more and more things, this weapon is becoming more and more naked, so <laughs> that's funny. Anyways, um, yeah, so I got the attach points, so let's go into this one. How do you make systems that work together well in Unity? I mean, the answer is it depends on the quality of your code. If your code is good, well-written, nice and clean code, then putting together systems is actually super easy. But if you write super dirty code, you know, just like I used to do 10 years ago, yeah, then things become quite a bit more difficult. So the answer to that is focus on writing good, clean code. And the better the code quality, the easier it is to put together lots and lots of systems. Okay, so I got the grip. And now let me make a stock. And actually, I don't know how many stocks this includes. So let me... Uh, what do I want? Can I actually... Uh, no, I can't. I thought I could do something, but turns out I can't. And tips on writing cleaner code. Well, I would say go watch my my complete course. The goal with this one was to focus on writing good, clean code. So if you go through there, if you pay attention to all of that, by the end, you will have learned quite a lot. So yeah, learn a lot with your free course. Thank you. Ah, that's awesome. I'm glad it helped. That was a ton of work, but I'm really happy that the response to it has been so positive. So nice. Thank you. Uh, okay, so let me go into the stock. I need to pick up this guy. Can't I actually... Because uh, dragging this is actually quite tricky. So let me grab a different one. Okay, so down here for the stock. Ah, crap, this one. Ah, boy, where was I? Where was I? Weapon A. This one for the... Yeah, there are all these stocks. Can I unlock this one? Does that work? Oh, it does work. Nice. At least I think it works. Uh, okay, so where's the stock? So let me grab just a handful of them. So just stock one, then two, and then three. Just have enough just to test it out. So the stock two and the stock three. Okay, then I'm going to need a scope, scope one. So for this one, let's call it a scope. And let me find where's the scope. And the scope is all the way over here, so let's unlock and relock. Or is that it? That is it. Lock it. Go down, find the scope, and let me grab. Which one is that one? That one is a scope two. Okay. Scope one, two, and three. So let me grab that one, scope two, and that one is scope three. All right, great. So then on this one, let me unlock it and just drag the stocks and the scopes, drag them all in there. Okay, good. So actually with this, 
pretty much all of the code should already be working just over here. Let me just refactor this. So instead of making a function for each of them, so change part, and I'm going to receive a weapon part so dot part type for the part type, and I'm going to basically replace all of these references. So that one, that one, that one, and that one. Okay. So up here, when I click on this one, this one I want to modify the grip. So let's go down dot grip. And on these other ones, so on this one I'm going to modify the stock, and on this one modify the scope. Okay, and just like this, I think everything should already be working. So that one already has the attachments on the thing, so let's see. Right, and got an error. What is the error? Uh, did I not drag the buttons? I didn't. Let me unlock this, and there's the buttons. Okay, so I need to add the stock button and the scope button. Okay, ever considered making Unreal Engine 5 content? Uh, in an ideal world, sure. <laughs> but in the reality where I have limited free time, yeah, that one is... Basically, I mean, it takes a lot of a lot of time to become an expert at something. So in order for me to be able to teach Unreal 5, I would need to spend a lot of time actually learning it. So yeah, I'd love to, to learn it just for fun. But yeah, learning it to the point where I can actually teach, yeah, that is probably not going to happen since that one takes so much time and effort. So yeah, for learning UE5, probably better to look elsewhere. And look at that, it does work, except for some reason one of the stocks is a magazine. Why? <laughs> I don't know, apparently I dragged the wrong reference. That's a stock, that's a stock, yeah, that's a mag. <laughs> I have no idea. Why did I drag a mag? I don't know, but yeah, the stock 03. Alright, but yeah, look at that, it is working. Hey, Super Chat, Bucket of Games, thank you! Not much picking. yeah, that's awesome! I mean, thank you for the Super Chat, thank you for being here, watching the videos, thank you for everything, so yeah, nice, thank you. Okay, look at that, so grips, I can modify the grip, I can modify the scope, and I can modify the stock. And why is that one off? This is kind of the, the issue, because I'm going to have to... Huh. Because the... Ah, oh, crap, the same bug again. <laughs> Alright, I really gotta fix that bug, yeah, because every time I go, it messes up. But, uh, yeah, so for this one, mod stock A, yeah, it is... Ah, crap. <laughs> uh, the weapon becoming a burden. Um, yeah. But why is this one offset? Because all the other ones, they're all pretty good. And, you know, if I go inside this one, yep, the pivot is in there. The pivot is in there. And for this one, for some reason, the pivot is different. And for this one, it's also different. Yeah, basically. But that is easy to solve. Basically, I'm going to need to make uh prefabs of my own parts kind of so let me actually make all the for the prefabs and i'm just going to make a handful of them just right now um so sh sh let me just just fix that one just because that's a bit annoying uh okay so what am i doing uh let me grab the so on the stock let me create an empty game object then go into the stock, let me pick up stock 3, put it inside there, and basically I need to offset it to where it makes sense. And okay, that does make sense. So just give it pretty much the exact same name, and let's make a prefab out of this one. So if you ever have issues with uh, modifying the pivot of some object, this is how you do it. You just make it a child of some other object, and hopefully now it should be working, alright. Uh, okay, so over here, if I modify, one, two, three, there you go, it does work. All right, look at that, pretty cool. Just like this, yeah, it's already looking quite interesting. I can modify the grip, scope, and all kinds of things. All right, so that's already pretty fun. Uh, okay, so the barrel and the underbarrel, those are actually going to be the trickiest things. I wasn't expecting a buff dude. <laughs> that's funny, all right, thank you, I guess. Uh, yeah, for me, I love... My two passions are programming and working out, so yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's good because that's the only way that I can actually do what I do. Basically, my biggest problem is when it comes to work-life balancing, that is always my tricky thing, but the one thing that I never give up on is my time for going to gym and walking my dogs, and that is really the one thing that helps me 
pretty much stay productive and helps me keep doing this for such a long time without burning out. Yeah, it's the fact that I got those two things always. Okay, all right, so let's fix this annoying bug. Uh, right. Theoretically, can you make Unity just as good as Unreal using AGRP? Yep. Uh, nowadays, yeah, pretty much. I mean, Unreal probably still has a bit of an edge. Uh, and the main thing they have is they have Quixel, so they have all kinds of really photogrammetry assets, so using good quality assets is quite a lot for making, but Unity has the Adaptive Probes volume. And this one looks really awesome. Yeah, right now it's only for AGRP, but they are making it for URP soon. So with this, basically, basically that's the issue, is making something look good really comes to lighting quality, and Unity seems to be pushing more towards this direction, so with that, it should be very good. So this is basically a way for adding uh, probe volumes much easier. It's currently on AGRP and should be coming to URP sometime in the future. So yeah, this is the one thing that I'm really looking forward to it, being able to have screen space, global illumination. Just that one is great. Obviously, raycasting is better, but just that one is great. So yeah, definitely Unity is pushing towards having a bit more better fidelity, so that should be nice. Tips are good tutorials to learn Unity from your channel. I mean, if you're a beginner, then go ahead, watch my free course. That one, if you go through that one, by the end, you will have gained a ton of knowledge. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so what was I doing? Um, right, so the stock does work. So the next thing is the barrel, and that one is actually the one that is going to be really tricky because of the way that this weapon handles... Uh, because the way that this system has, because it's basically the barrel, but I don't want to separate the barrel from the handguard sort of thing, so I kind of want to put them together, but the issue is that these have different shapes, different sizes, so that is going to be a bit tricky, but let's put here the barrel, what time is it? Oh damn, it's already midday 20, yeah, <laughs> I guess it makes sense why my mouth is already quite dry, because I'm really not made for... for <laughs> what was I doing Ask that? Yeah, I always ask myself that. Uh, yeah, my mouth is definitely starting to be quite a bit dry. Anyways, um, okay, so basically, because I got the barrel, and I want to include it with the handguard and the iron sight. So these are the three things that I want inside of the barrel, and this is going to be the barrel attach point. So basically, yeah, I'm going to make... Uh, right, let me think. Because the issue is... Hey, thank you so much for the super chat. Thanks once again. Uh, the issue is that over here, this one actually includes multiple handguards on multiple sizes. Actually, that's not an issue right now. It's only an issue afterwards. Yeah, so actually right now, that might not be the problem. Unrecord. Yeah, that is really awesome. Yeah. Unrecord, that one is definitely next level. Although the issue with that one, the issue, the uh, why that one looks so good is not necessarily because of the assets, even though obviously the assets are super high quality, but it's more for the movement of the animation, the way that the pistol is moving away from the from the face, so the face is looking in one direction, the pistol is looking in another one. That disconnect, that is the one thing that really helps sell that one, because that one really does look insanely realistic, and yeah, it's because of using high quality assets with some that split in the animation, so that is really interesting, so... But yeah, that one is definitely a example of what's coming in the future as more and more devs have access to better and better tools. Yeah, that is going to become much more common. What kind of dogs do you have? Uh, they're a mixed breed, so yeah, no idea. <laughs> they're both medium sized they're both sleeping, they're both very, very calm, very chill, so yeah, they're nice. Uh, okay, so over here, so I'm going to need basically a barrel, and I'm going to basically have to build the barrels of different shapes. Hmm. Alright, so this one's going to be a little bit tricky, but let's see. So I got a barrel one. Yeah, I should have actually duplicated that one first. So let me duplicate this one. Let me unpack this prefab. What am I doing? What am I doing? Where's the prefab? Prefab. Let me unpack this one. And this one is going to be the barrel two. And for the barrel too, uh, it's actually not the barrel. Ah crap, I'm, I'm thinking a bit too much. Uh, make prefabs of barrels, yeah, but it's... 
more that you know because I got like a tiny handguard over here so I pretty much need to pick up that one and need to link up the barrel like this does it look okay I don't know and on such a small one do I also include the iron sight yes or no does that look yeah, actually I think that looks good I think it looks better like that than oh crap than without the if I take away the iron sight and put the barrel a bit more inside, I don't know, that also looks good. <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe I could do barrels with and without iron sight. Yeah, maybe that could work. Anyways, for now, let's just include it and yeah. Could you just allow some matches? Yep, you could definitely do that. I mean, for this, I'm focusing on maybe on something much more basic, but yeah, then afterwards, you could add all kinds of logic. All right, so yeah. How to backup Unity projects the right way. I mean, for me, usually I just do a super basic zip of the entire file. But yeah, that's not the, the right way. So if you want the right way, I would say uh, game dev guide. And where's the one? Where's the one? You made a really nice video on how to use Plastic SCM. So this is Unity's official uh, version control tool. So if that's the kind of thing that you're looking after, Definitely go ahead and watch that video, because yeah, that is the built-in tool, so that should be the one that is easy. Yeah, the classic zip file, because for me, I may mostly do backups just for just for safekeeping, pretty much. So yeah, for me, super basic zips work. But yeah, if you're working as a team, then using zips really isn't the best approach. So yeah, definitely go ahead and look into that one. Okay, so barrel two. Actually I'm going to name this barrel one. Why did I call it barrel two? Uh because this one is, what is this one? Let me see, it's based on the handguard, so this one is the three. So let's actually name this one the barrel three. Oh crap, so many clicks, sorry. <laughs> trying to click underneath. Uh, or I think of UI toolkit, this is production ready. I did do quite a lot of research on it already. Uh, I haven't made a video yet, but I did do quite a lot of research and it does seem that nowadays it is already pretty much ready. Although I don't think it is still, I don't think it's runtime UI yet, or am I wrong about that? I don't know, it's been a few months since I've seen it. So is it now good for runtime UI? Uh, but yeah, basically the last time that I looked at it, general for 21, but I don't want 21. I want to see, for example, version 22, do they recommend it? Okay, so for the editor, they recommend UI Toolkit, but for runtime, they still recommend Unity UI. So, yeah. But yeah, if you want to make editor tools, I've looked into it, and using UI Toolkit is so much easier than using IM GUI. So, if that's the kind of thing that you do, definitely go and look into UI Toolkit. That is definitely more than stable enough for that use case. It just appears that for runtime, it is not yet there, so we shall see. Is there on version 23? No, on 23, they still say the same thing. But yeah, definitely, it's already advanced enough that you can actually start using it. It's your first programming language. I started doing IRC scripts. So I don't know what's the average age in chat, but how many of you remember Merrick? How many of you were alive back then? <laughs> yeah, because that's pretty much how I started by making IRC scripts. So writing code to make this kind of thing. I made all kinds of games, kind of like Hangman games, trivia games, so yeah, that's pretty much how I started, by learning how to do all kinds of those things. It's kind of a C-like language, so yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely great to start like this. I made my own thing on top, so yeah, it was pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, someone born 91, someone remembers. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely been quite a while, but yeah, this was a lot of fun, really great, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let me continue making the barrels. So I got the barrel two with that handguard. Let me just move the, uh, what do I want? Just the handguard two. Okay, let me grab the iron sight and the barrel, push it a little bit like that. Okay, so then the barrel three is done. And is there a four? There, no, not this one, the handguard. There's a four, yeah, okay, so there's a four. So let me make the barrel four. Oh, crap, I can't see underneath the characters. That, that's the tricky part. Again, let me just... 
push it a bit just so I can work a little bit. <laughs> That's kind of the issue with the characters here. Um, yeah, so for the barrel, let me grab the last one. So the hand card 04. Get rid of this one. Take these two and push them out like this. Maybe push it out a bit further. Yeah, because this one is, this kind of barrel is more from like a sniper rifle or something like that. So yeah, all right. Okay, so anyway, so just making all the various barrels. So this is barrel four, this one is barrel two, and this one is barrel one. Okay. So now let me make these script model objects. So the barrel one, two, three, and four. So the three, ah, crap. Uh, so for the barrel two, this one is a barrel. Let me modify all of these. Put them all as a barrel for the barrel one, the barrel two, the barrel three, and the barrel four. Okay, so then on the weapon attachment system, let's add another entry on this nice structure. And this one is going to be for the barrel. And the attach point is this one, so the barrel attach point. And yep, thanks to how the, the code is all set up, this should be it. So let's try it out. And I just forgot the barrel button, so let me actually just fix that one. So up here for the on click on the barrel, actually going to do pretty much this, modify the barrel. All right. And you don't like enumerating coroutines? Can you elaborate on that point? Basically, it's because the pattern they force you to use. So you need to have a mono behavior object. So you need to have a game object. Then you need to make a function that returns I enumerator, uh, my coroutine. Then inside you need to do return yield, do all kinds of things or yield return. That's the thing. So you need to do that. Then you need to call start coroutine and do a my coroutine, something like that. So basically that whole, this whole entire project, this whole, this whole structure, being forced to use a mono behavior, being forced to use a game object, being forced to call start coroutine, being forced to make an I enumerator with yield return. Basically for me, I find this entire pattern to be way too convoluted. This is way too unnecessary. So that's pretty much it. For me, I find it so much easier to just do a basic flow timer. It's a lot more straightforward, at least for me. So that is pretty much why I do that. You can use a singleton class. Yeah, sure, you can do that. You can definitely work around it, but Personally, for me, I find all of those requirements to get that pattern going, I find that to be way too, way too cumbersome. So yeah, for me, that is why I just prefer super simple flow timers that is really basic, really easy to understand. So yeah, but it is uh, just personal preference. So if you don't like coroutines, then by all means, go ahead and use them. There's nothing inherently wrong with them. It's just because I personally do not like the pattern, but if you do, then go ahead and use them. Uh, okay, why did I mess up over here? Did I not add them? Yeah, I forgot to add them to the list. So up here on the weapon part list, let me unlock it and add the four new barrels. And that's all I need to do and everything else should be working. Do you have problems learning to code or are you one of the genius people? <laughs> I'm definitely not one of the genius people. I'm simply someone who has been writing code for many, many years. That is really it. So yeah, I definitely have problems. I mean, you can go rewatch this live stream and see how many errors I've got whilst building this system. The only difference is simply when I find an error, I try to fix it. So I learn how to do it. I do a lot of trial and error, a lot of things. So yeah, I'm definitely not a genius, just someone who has spent many, many hours doing this sort of thing. All right, so look at that. This is already working quite well. So I got the scope, I got the stock, I got the grip. All of it looks really nice. So I can make a really tiny weapon or make something like a really long rifle and so on. All right. So honestly, the only thing that I'm missing, I think it's just the end barrel. And afterwards, everything is already working quite well. All right. Is the logic of a class loaded on the heap? And if I load an item on the class, the logic itself multiple times in memory? Uh, the heap is for... I always confuse the heap and the stack, but yeah. Let's see. Okay, I always confuse those, but yeah, I don't know. So basically, when you load an object, the class is a reference type. So that one is, yeah, it's on the heap, I think. Yeah, structs are value types. So those are the ones that go on the stack. Uh, but yeah, the logic itself multiple times in memory. Uh, no, I don't think so. The logic itself, 
Actually, that's a good question, but no, I don't think so. It's only the data that gets stored. Actually, I'm not 100% sure about that. But either way, the code itself isn't too much, so... Yeah, it will not load the function multiple times, right? Yeah, because that's a... Uh, yeah, it just... it. You've got a different reference for each uh, instance of the class. So if you load the if you instantiate a class a hundred times, you are going to have a hundred times a hundred references to that. But yeah, the code itself, I don't think it's going to be repeated a hundred times. That would be very wasteful. So yeah. Uh, okay. So what was I doing? Uh, all right. Let me do the end barrel. That is the one. Actually, I made quite a bit of progress. I didn't expect to be able to do all this in this live stream which has been going on for an hour and a half so all right so that's actually very good yeah i didn't expect to be doing all this so the end barrel what do i call it what is a better name for this because i don't like the name end barrel but yeah barrel end end barrel what do you call it tip Ah, I really don't like the name, but anyways, barrel and button and inside. Ah, I really don't like the name, but muzzle. All right, that's good. Thank you. Yeah, that definitely makes a lot more sense rather than barrel and thank you. Muzzle button. Is it an M416? The whole thing is modular, so you can make this pack is actually really nice. I mean, that's the reason why I'm doing this, because this asset pack is going to be on a 70% discount on Monday next week. So yeah, they've got a bunch of presets over here. So for example, look at this one, a really complex weapon. Then for this one, some kind of heavy rifle. And on this one, this one is more of a regular looking rifle. Looks really nice, with nice red dot sight, that's cool. Then there's also an SMG. So basically all of these weapons are built using this modular system. So. With this, you can see, that oh, looks really nice. Nice SMG. Then you got a giant sniper rifle. So all of these are based on the same thing. So yeah. So these look really nice, yeah. Oh yeah, this one can do pretty much without a, a stock. So that's fun. That's on the Unity Asset Store. It's the one on the, where's my thing? The Sinti Store. It's, uh, it's the military pack, which is going to be, it's going to be on the, Sale. Where's the other one? The uh, military pack. Yeah, it's this one. Which is going to be 70% off uh, next week. So that is why I'm doing this. Because it's a real nice pack. So if you need some things, yeah. Thank you for always being so active on YouTube. Ah, that's awesome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for commenting. It's a two-way street. So yeah, thank you all so much. Okay. Are you just changing the gun objects on buttons click? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Just having different objects and different objects that change in different ways. And that is it. Okay, so uh, where was I? The muzzle. All right, so let me actually rename that one because muzzle does make a lot more sense. So thanks for that tip. So instead of barrel end, muzzle. Okay. <clears throat> more multiplayer netcode tutorials. Yeah, I definitely want to do that. I mean, I'm currently working on my steam game which is based on multiplayer so yeah that is definitely a topic that i will be covering quite a bit more in the future okay so uh right yeah that's the issue with the with the muzzle it's the attach point for it yeah or hmm no yeah it is tricking yeah this one is quite a bit tricky why does script compilation take forever? I mean, that depends on what kind of things you have. But you can definitely look into assembly definition. Ah, oh, crap. Assembly definition unity. Yeah, if you got problems with code compilation taking way too long, definitely look into assembly definitions. It's a bit tricky to set up also have a lecture on this in my Ultimate Unity Overview course, so if you have that, you can go watch that. But yeah, if you want to, if you want to speed up compilation, you can do this, and basically with this, if you modify just something inside the library, then it only recompiles this one, rather than recompiling everything. So it can definitely help with, with the 
Compilation times. For me, usually that's not an issue, because usually most projects, unless they are super long, most projects compile in like two seconds, so for me, never really does that, yeah. Start with naming things too. Yeah, picking good names is definitely one of the toughest parts. So yeah, definitely having help with that is always very useful. Okay, so on the weapon attachment system, let me add another part. And for this other part, it's going to be the muzzle and drag the muzzle reference, all right. So yeah, for the buttons, this one is actually pretty easy. Yeah, and I should probably refactor this code. Gotta do it in a little bit, rather than having so many individual reference. Or actually, eh, I could and I couldn't. I don't know. It works either way. Uh, anyway, so yeah, do it in order to modify the muzzle. So, ah, crap, what did I do? The muzzle. So that's all I need to do over there, and really just building parts. So thankfully, this system is actually quite easy. If you've ever done Android iOS games. I've done some research on that area, but no, not really. For me, it's uh, I usually stick with just uh, I usually stick with just PC games. That's the thing that I've grown up on, the thing that I've learned. So yeah, mostly stick with that one. Do you know the Hot Reload plugin? Yeah, I I do think that I've I'm pretty sure I didn't look at it in one of my assets list videos, and I'm pretty sure nowadays it is actually free. So I'm pretty sure Unity Hot Reload. There's an asset that is now free. Is it this one? Okay, I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, so apparently there's a... Yeah, so I've seen it and it doesn't look very interesting, so definitely something that I would like to research. Yeah, look at that. It's a Unity Verified Solution and it is free, so yeah. This is definitely one of the things that I would like to research as soon as I can find the time. Because yeah, if you got problems with, with doing it, yeah, you can, <laughs> you can definitely learn this. How do you spin the pencil? Well, basically, many years ago, I got into pen tricks, even though I'm not very good, as you can see. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know, I started learning from it quite a long time ago. But yeah, if you go on pen tricks tutorial, as always, nowadays, you can really find so many things in so many places. Yeah, look at that. You can do the charger. Oh, I could do that one, but not anymore. That also requires a specific thing. Yeah, the the thumb around, that's the basic one, and the thing above, I don't remember what that one was called, yeah, going up like that, that's cool, <laughs> yeah, that was fun, definitely something that I, I would like to get a little better, anyways, um, yeah, uh, let me share this project, yep, GitHub link, yep, this will, I'm basically making this for a tutorial, which should be out next week, so, yep, uh, okay, so let me just, Continue doing this a little bit more. What was I doing? Modified muzzle. So basically, I just need to make the prefabs. So for the... Oh, actually, that's good. Because for the muzzle, I also need to be able to enable no muzzle. So, hmm. Okay, so let me go inside, make a prefab. And for the muzzle, yeah, they got some muzzle breaks. Then there was a silencer, wasn't it? Yep. There's a silencer, there's a bunch of silencers. Okay, so let me put in there, call it muzzle one. And yeah, the issue is going to be how to position it. That's what's going to be really tricky. Now let's start with just muzzle one. Start with just one and then see if everything works. So the muzzle one. This one is going to be of type muzzle and this one is going to be a muzzle one. All right, so just with this, I should be able to, oh crap, I can't see, sorry. <laughs> uh, let me see underneath, just disable this one, okay. Oh crap. Uh, what did I forget? Of course, I forgot the button, always forget the button. Okay, so I can select the grip, the stock, the scope, the barrel, and the muzzle crashes. Why did you crash? Did I forget to drag the reference? No, I did. So what happened? Oh, right. I forgot to drag it onto the parts list. That's why. Yeah, and for that one, I need to... I need to go into... To be able to allow none. Yeah, see, this is kind of problem. So like this, it does work, but the problem is that the muzzle position 
That one has to be based on the barrel size, otherwise it goes inside. Okay, so let me think, how am I going to do this? Because basically the muzzle requires an offset. Could I do maybe a barrel SO? I have a project where I only use an Arduino board in combination with DMT. The game will be a multiplayer game. Oh, that's nice. You can store data from the sensor in the form of time series for each player to analyze them later. For a suitable database. Yeah, I really don't know. Sorry. <laughs> that kind of area. Uh, yeah, I mean, you need some database online, and there are tons and tons of them, but yeah, I'm really not familiar with the pros and cons of all of them. So, yeah, I know that... Azure has a bunch of things, so if you want to learn how to do that, I did do some research, I did cover some Azure tutorials, so if you want to learn how to interact with Azure from Unity, go ahead and watch those videos, uh, but yeah. Probably attach the muzzle point to the barrel so uh, not really because I don't want to put the attach point as a child of a spawned object, so that would be kind of dragging. So basically I need the barrel SO to contain like the offset for the muzzle position. That's kind of what I need to do. But the Kitchen Chaos Multiplayer course will help me create a local multiplayer version. Uh, that's not really the focus on the course, but yeah, sure. I mean, if you go through the course and then you learn about the input system, which is used in the course, if you do that, then yeah, it should be relatively easy to convert it to a local multiplayer. Yeah. How do you instantiate that weapon with the specific attachments you choose? Uh, for that, I really just need to store the... So basically over here, the weapon, it's all stored inside this dictionary right here. It's got the part, which inside has the weapon part so. So I would basically just need to save that. So I'm going to do that in a little bit. But yeah, it's pretty much it. Just save the weapon part so. So... Let me just do the muzzle and then I'll do the saving and loading. Okay, so for the muzzle, all right, I think the best thing of all is to make, hmm. I, I wonder if this works. So if I make, what do I need? I need the barrel weapon part as so. So if I make this one the barrel weapon part of so, so this one is going to be a script ball object. And on this one, basically I just need a public vector three for the muzzle offset. So I think like this, or actually, yeah, it shouldn't be a vector three, just a float muzzle offset. Okay, so I think just like this. Now, if I go up here and I make a barrel weapon part of so, barrel one, yeah, I just need a different name. Oh crap, that's not, no, not scriptable object, but needs to extend weapon part of so. Yeah, this is what I want. Does this work? Oh, maybe it does work. All right, okay, so I think this might, this might actually work. Hmm. All right, okay, okay. This might work. Uh, let me put this barrel old. Okay, so I got the barrel one. Yeah, let's just make two of them. Oh, crap, that's not it. So the barrel one, and then I got a barrel two. Okay. So now I just need to go inside the barrel, put that one, and basically for the muzzle position, that's going to be pretty much just a point inside of it. So it's going to be offset by, let's say by this much. So by 0.1432. So if I go into this one, 0.1432, and then if instead of this one, if I've got the barrel two, so for the barrel two, make a new game object and for this one the offset is going to be something like this I think so on the barrel 2 I have this offset so that way I have a bit more information when it's a barrel as opposed to something else okay uh, 
from this so I change the part yeah I think I think it is like this right so I change the part I set the part transform okay great hmm so if uh, if this weapon part so dot part type if it equals a barrel so if this one is a barrel then I'm going to go into this one weapon part dot muzzle so this is going to be the muzzle part attach point muzzle part attach point I'm going to go into this one and in the attach point transform dot dot position equals and I'm going to put it this one dot attach point transform dot position plus why am I using the position uh, does right work? Okay, now a bit, I'm a bit confused right now. But yeah, so on this one dot right times the. All right, I need to grab that one. Uh, so I need to get what did I call it? The barrel weapon part so. Okay, barrel weapon part so equals this weapon part so as barrel weapon part so. Okay, so let me get the attach point for the barrel, just to make things a bit more clear. Okay, so I get the barrel weapon part and then I'm going to position the muzzle on the barrel dot position. Was the right, is that the right? I don't know if it is the right, but yeah, that one dot muzzle offset. Okay, I think like this, it might be working. So let's see. All right. Follower from Turkey, improving myself more and more every day. Thanks to your videos. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm glad my videos have helped you. That's really cool. Best of luck in your learning journey. Nice. Uh, oh, I still haven't fixed that issue. I thought I fixed it, but yeah. Um, so if I put a barrel. Oh, why are you moving? Put the barrel and got a no reference. Did I not add a muzzle? Uh, on the muzzle, I did add it. All right, bye, thanks for being here, thank you. Uh, what exactly was known here? This one is known? No, this one can't possibly be known. This one is also not known. Is the barrel part, is this one known? I make good input prediction. <laughs> That's a very complex topic, so not really something that can be answered right away. That really depends on your, on the context, whatever you are trying to do. So the barrel, got no reference. What? Is it the barrel weapon part or so? Is this the one that is known? Do I need to cast it instead of doing as? Maybe. So you get that special happy feeling when you get something to work properly. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Whenever something works, it's always amazing. Like for example, this. There you go. We got a null error. I think the biggest difference is as a beginner, sometimes you get frustrated when you see an error. Whereas for me, an error, that's just part of the process. So the fact that I'm seeing this error doesn't bother me. It's just perfectly normal part of the process. So in this case, I'm pretty sure the issue is that I can't, I need to cast it instead of doing as. Checking if it's a bear, not a muzzle. Which one did I grab? Now, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, no, yeah. No, it it is. The logic is correct. It's just over here that I forgot to add it. Oh, crap. This can be... Oh, actually, no. Yeah, I forgot the Unity has the thing for sorting the things. All right, so that's good. So, 9. So, I can get rid of the other elements. So, put it on 10. And then add the barrel one. Basically, the issue was that I had forgotten to add the new 
script my object type so like this it should be working so like this barrel and yep there you go got no errors and where is the muzzle uh right yeah this is the thing it's positioned on the right where it should be on the forward vector so forward instead of right so up here for the forward instead of the right one all right <clears throat> about the errors that is not about your code like when using an external plugin yeah that part is definitely a lot more frustrating <laughs> but thankfully that doesn't usually happen so yeah did you fix the bug where the weapon fl flipped around nope not yet it is not yet fixed so up here yep there you go the muzzle is in there yeah there you go <laughs> that annoying bug ah, i really gotta fix that because that's annoying uh yeah so got the barrel and got the other barrel and yep it did work all right look at that the barrel position is indeed changing so i can put a muzzle and there you go it does work all right awesome <laughs> yeah there you go mistaken what the input to feel good well the first thing you need to do is actually define what exactly do you mean by feeling good because that can mean a billion different things so yeah which have game development what would you tell yourself when you first started on this path well what i would say is write a lot of code make a lot of games so pretty much what i ended up doing so yeah there's really no no shortcut to game development. You really, you just build something and you keep making things. So I made a really nice video quite a long time ago on seven steps. Yeah, that one, which is basically just make a bunch of tiny games, then make a bunch of small games, then make a bunch of medium games, then make a bunch of large games. <laughs> That's really it. I mean, experience really is one of the most important things. So definitely spend a lot of time making a lot of games. For me, one of the things that helped me quite a lot was how I spent five years making Flash games. And Flash games, by, the, by definition, are only super tiny. So in those five years, I made about 40 games. And that gave me a ton of knowledge with regards to programming, how to write code, how to do game development with regards to game design, trying all kinds of game genres. So yeah, basically make tons and tons of games. And with experience, things become so much better. How many unfinished projects did you have before publishing something? I don't know because what does publishing something mean? That's kind of the issue because uh, in Flash games, yeah, I published about 40 of them and I probably had another, I don't know, at least 20 or 30 other unfinished prototypes. But when it comes to Steam games, I actually don't have too many because usually when I decide on a Steam game idea, when I actually decide on it and start really building something, by then I'm pretty focus that this is going to be my same thing so actually when it comes to steam game projects for that one yeah i actually don't have too many unfinished prototypes uh right i'm a senior full stack dev with a good salary but i'm hating my job what can i do to change the game dev uh yeah definitely start by watching the course and see if it is something you like but yeah i would say i would definitely say don't jump uh, don't if you got a good job definitely don't quit it before you have a good alternative because making money with game development is really difficult so yeah i would say stick with your job even if you hate it that sucks but yeah that's stick with it and do game dev on the side and maybe when you get to the point where your side game dev when that one is actually providing income then maybe you can make the full jump but uh, yeah i would definitely say don't quit it until you do it because game development is really difficult yeah uh right did you enter the Cinti jam uh no because i usually don't have time for game jams so i normally don't do game jams but yeah that does look really interesting so if you do, if you have some time i would definitely encourage you to do that i mean personally i love their style that's why i'm using oh can you still hear me did something go down I got a random notification from OBS saying reconnected. So did this go down? Is it live? I don't know. I think so. Okay, I think it's live again. Okay, something went down. <laughs> All right, okay, good. Uh, okay, right. <clears throat> so let me, let me finally fix that bug, that annoying bug about the rotation. So basically, let me do a debug.log on the mouse delta and see which is the one causing problems. Because I think it's only on the rotate. How do I get input a specific controller? What do you mean by that? I don't know what you mean, but go and look into the 
input system. The input system, basically you can get all kinds of input, so it depends on how you have it set up, but yeah, looking to use the new input system and doing that kind of thing should be relatively similar. Okay, so I rotate, all right, and the issue is when I click away and then I click back, yeah, there you go, the Y is on minus 600, and I think that's the issue. Yeah, if the Y is huge on the negative, on negative or positive, because if I go here, then I click outside on the left side, and yeah, that one rotates but does not flip, so the issue is with the, with the Y. So I can actually do mouse down dot y equals math ah oh crap meth I always get it wrong meth up dot clamp. Let's clamp the mouse down to dot y between I don't know minus two hundred and plus two hundred. Does that one fix it? So if I go here, I rotate, I click away, and I click back, and there you go. Now, it has been clamped, so it no longer flips up, down, left, right. If I go, yeah, I should probably clamp the X as well, just so it doesn't do that massive thing. So, and the mouse delta on the X, also put it, same thing. <clears throat> so this fix huge jumps when when unity loses focus all right <laughs> meth yeah meth is <laughs> tiny it's difficult to write but yeah uh, okay favorite hobbies i don't like walking my dogs i don't know if that counts as a hobby i don't love working out going to the gym oh crap i close it uh so yeah i don't love walking around running Oh man, I messed up. So I'll put it on 16 by 9 and put it on the side there. And maximize. That's what I want. Alright, great. You say it's your own job. I never had a regular job, so I am not the right person to ask about that. Hey, look at that. This is the weapon. Alright. Okay, let me just fix the other barrels and enable the ability to choose a no muzzle. Uh, so let me go, let me call it muzzle zero, and yeah, for the muzzle zero, I'm just going to do muzzle like this, except there's nothing inside of it, that's it, pretty basic. So the muzzle zero, you got the muzzle zero, and on the weapon part list, let's add the muzzle zero. Okay, so on the barrel, let me make the other barrel, so the barrel three and the, oh crap, and the barrel four. Portuguese are just living there. Yep, I'm here. I am Portuguese. So I was born here and I live here. Yep. It's okay to move the character in fixed update. It depends on what you're doing. If you are moving using physics, then yep, you should be doing it on fixed update. But if you are moving by modifying the velocity, which is what I usually do, for that one, you don't have to do it on the fixed update. You can do it on update because modifying the velocity of the rigid body, that doesn't actually modify the the uh doesn't actually move the object so for that one if you're just modifying the velocity you can do it on the regular update which is what i normally do so it's been a while since i made a regular character controller but yeah this one over here this one is still a nice tutorial so on there yeah i use physics in order to move it and yep i do that want to learn game dev yep go ahead and watch the free 10 hour course so if you go through that course you will learn quite a lot uh okay so what am i doing uh right the position on the barrel so let me put the barrel three reset and the barrel four crap uh let me find the positions for both these sure i mean uh i'm speaking english just because i assume most people uh, in chat, uh, just no English, no Portuguese, but yeah, sure, I can, yeah. Uh, okay, so let me put this, put an empty game object, push it to the side, and for this one, yeah, pretty much like that, so this is the offset, so for the, this one is what, barrel 3, let me put on this offset, okay, and then for the barrel 4, 
let me offset it by a little bit more so something like this on this offset like this okay good great so on this one if i add the barrel three and the barrel four and yep now it should be working okay great oh boy my voice is already very messed up you see about mvc patterns uh i've never used it uh i know that it's super used in things like uh, web development and so on i haven't looked into it because of the when i was researching azure a lot of those azure things do you use that pattern? So, yep, I'm aware of it, but yeah, I've never really used it. And I don't think in game development it is used quite a lot, but yeah, if that is something that you're already familiar with, it can be really great for... I like how it forces you to separate. So the logic from the view, I always forget which is which. So the model, that's like the structure, then the view, then things. So yeah, it does help with separating things out, which can be quite useful. So yeah. Uh, all right, so yeah, so this is working. I can put the muzzle barrels of different lengths and the muzzle is positioned correctly. Then I got the stock, the grip, and all of these. And there you go. All right, nice. Okay, great. All right. Get input from a specific controller. Player input and player input manager components. You asked the the input system uh i remember it's you've got the control schemes or it's not the control scheme i don't know because on input system multiple characters there was yep yeah, there you go cross-platform control so watch this video on unity's channel they've covered something like that where they got multiple characters all of them driven with the same thing so they use it in order to define which characters they use so yeah they made a bunch of these videos so definitely look into that one uh okay so what am i doing all right let me just make a quick save load system so let's go up here and as usual make a private a class save object so i got the save object and Am I just going to store all the parts? That is always the thing that I always have trouble remembering, which is, does it automatically serialize, yes or no? Hmm. So you are using a create function method. What create function? Is Singleton dead? <laughs> No, that's a great, very useful pattern. Personally, I really like it, so yeah. Code Monkey Gym and Fitness video. <laughs> yeah, maybe one day I'll do a second channel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lately, for me, it's a. I go to gym, do regular bodybuilding, fitness stuff, then usually on the weekends I do a bit more running, and lately I've been more into rock climbing, so yeah, do a lot of things. <laughs> Yeah, maybe one day I'll do a second channel, just focus on fitness. That would be funny. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Portugal. Uh, all right, so for the... Okay, so for the save object, I want... Yeah, I think this is actually going to be weapon part SO, weapon part SO list. And I think this actually does not work. So, so public... Not public. Ah, private void save... And on save, let me go new save object and inside the save object for the weapon part so list, I'm going to need a list of weapon part so weapon part so list, make a new list and basically I'm going to go do a for each on this guy. Ah oh, crap, trying to, uh, so for each on the part type attach point, part type attach ah crap i'm already starting to miss okay so go on to this one so if this one dot weapon part is so it is not known that means there's something on there so on the weapon part is so list let me do an add and add this guy right here 
Okay, so I'm just going to add that. Then you do that one into that one. This is the save object, save object. And then I take this save object and I do a JSON utility to JSON and convert this into JSON. So that's the string JSON. And let me do a debug.log in order to save this JSON. So this is the save and up here on the update, let's do some testing. So if input get key down on the T key, when that happens, let's try saving. Okay. I have bad social anxiety when I lose control over limbs and stuff. Oh damn, that's difficult. Yeah, gym is dangerous. Yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely start by working out at home. That's definitely an option. Although I would definitely also encourage you to, I don't know, try to beat that. Essentially what I'm saying is a lot of people get really self-conscious about going to gym, but personally I can tell you my point of view as someone who goes to gym five, six times a week, for me, I don't really pay attention to anyone. So if I see anyone who's a beginner, who's something I'm really not paying attention, I'm just focused on my own thing. So that's usually something that people have a fear, which is, one of those sort of imaginary fears. <laughs> what I mean is the other people, most of them are probably not judging you, especially the ones who are who are there regularly. They're just focused on their own thing. So if that is your concern, I would say, I would say personally, for me, I, I've never felt the desire to mock someone at the gym. I mean, we're all there to improve ourselves. So yeah, I would say, basically if I saw you at the gym, I would not have any negative opinions upon you. So. I would say focus on that and focus on the fact that the social anxiety that is probably all in your head and all the other people they're just focusing on their own thing so focus on your own I mean fitness is all about self-improvement so so yeah do that but if you if you can do it at home then definitely do it I mean for me I prefer going to gym there's much more much more equipment much more things but yeah whatever you can do it always helps yeah yep we are all at the gym for the same reason so yeah and yeah Cold sandwich. Yeah, thank you for the super chat. Most important teacher of my life. That is awesome. Yeah, I'm glad the videos have helped you. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, okay, what was I doing? Kind of forgot. Uh, all right, let me choose a bunch of things and press on T. And nope, it did not save. Of course, this is always this issue that I was sort of concerned with. Yeah. I'm already for two years. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great experience, yeah. People are really nice, yeah. For the most part, people who go there, they're really, especially people who are the regulars, who know that they value things, yeah, really nice. Uh, so for the weapon part, yeah, that's a problem because it does not automatically do. So the weapon part is so, yeah, I gotta save it by a name, so I gotta do a string, so I gotta weapon part is so, name, so a list of String for the weapon part is so name list. Do a new list, and then I'm going to do a four for each weapon is so uh, weapon part is so weapon part is so in the weapon part is so list. So I go through that one, and then I go onto this one, and I add and the what part is so dot name. So I add the name, and then I save the name, and now it should work. So let's see. Oh, another one. Nice. Hey, thank you so much for the super chat. Super chat, cute, nice. Oh, hey, Jeremy. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Bye, croissant. Yeah, thank you. Nice. Yeah, I hope you had a nice flight back. I hope that was fun. Yeah. Hope you're doing well. That's cool. Thank you. <laughs> uh, right. So press T. And it was, uh, nope. Okay. So now that's strange. That should have worked. Uh, okay, why did that not work? Wait, is that one? No, it's not that one. Well, this one dot count. Am I not adding? This one should be adding. Why are you not adding? This video will be on YouTube later. Yep, this will be recorded. And of course, the reason why I'm doing this is for a 
uh, for a tutorial video which will be coming out sometime next week. So, yep. It, that is the goal. Okay, add things, save, and nope. Why are you invisible? Am I doing... Did I not save it? Oh, never mind. Ah, oh, God. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, sometimes I really mess up things. Yeah, I'm going through the list, but obviously the list doesn't have anything attached to it. Oh boy, so that's not what I want, so it's on this one dot keys. Is the key the weapon part type? It is, right? Or no? Is it? No, I don't remember. And part type, part type attach point, so yeah. Oh boy, so this is going to be the weapon part so dot part type, part type. And then I go into, so the part type attach point, so part type attach point. It is this one on this part type. So I get that one and then I do that and now it should work. All right. Can I get a dedicated server for free? Uh, not really, I mean, someone has to pay for it, so. If you want to use the lowest cost possible, I would encourage you to use Unity Relay because that one does have a very generous free tier. But yeah, getting a proper dedicated server for free, I mean, someone has to pay for that, so... I don't think you're going to find something for free. Alright, awesome, there you go, it's saving that one. So actually, maybe was it working previously? Hmm. Because it seems that it wasn't a uh, weapon part of so. So if I do the weapon partisan list and I put the weapon partisan list, I don't think this will work, but still, let's try it. Can run a micro EC2 on AWS free tier? Really? Forever? Or just a or just a one-time thing? Cause yeah, I haven't actually looked into AWS when it comes to cloud, I've really only looked at Azure. And yeah, I don't think they have anything that is hundred percent free all the time. But, yeah. Oh, look at that. So this actually might have worked. Okay. All right. So I thought it wasn't working, but it really w only wasn't working because of the... <clears throat> because of the thing. Yeah. Just for a year per account. Oh, okay. So it's one of those promotional things. 50, 50 CCUs isn't that much generous. It really is. I mean, when it comes to indie games, it is so difficult to... To reach people to sell copies so yeah 50 concurrent users that is a massive amount that is something like a thousand copies so if you sell a thousand copies on the first uh month of release then you can easily afford the cost that they charge for really so for me that one is either your game doesn't make it too well in which case you don't have to pay anything for the relay or your game does very well and the cost of the relay is super minuscule so either way i think that one is an excellent thing uh, okay, right, so I need to... Hey, another Super Chat! Hey, thanks again, Jerry. Thank you so much. Super Chat Kuhn! Hey, Newton! Second for us, huh? <laughs> Nice! Like a gym, alright, thank you! <laughs> That's nice, thank you all so much. Uh, Muslim can't be out without a barrel. Yeah, I need to add some... some... Uh, some testing over that. Anyways. Uh, right, so a private void load. So, on load, I'm going to receive a string for the JSON. And I take JSON, and can I just convert directly? I don't think so. So the save object, pass in the JSON, and save object, save object. So I'm not sure if this is going to work, but let's see. Let's do a debug.log on this one dot weapon partisan list dot count. Let's see if this one does find it. And let's see if it does, okay, just need bit of testing so up here on the update let's go do another key on the y key let's go with a load i speak it appears on my character's head yep yep it does oh got an error what did i do wrong they're not calling load oh right i gotta pass in the json uh right let me just copy paste actually i've got the yeah i've got the json right here so let me use a fixed JSON for now. String JSON. Let me copy this guy. Can I copy it directly like this? Yeah, there you go. It does work. I think it does work. Oh, right. Yeah, I... Oh, boy. This is way too much text. Uh, the JSON ends here. 
Okay, so let's see if this one does work. I don't like channel scan, but who can look at light mode? <laughs> sorry, but my issue is the opposite, is I cannot look at dark mode, so... Sorry, I really wish that it was dynamic, I really wish I could look at light mode and you could look at dark mode, but... Yeah, videos aren't really dynamic, so... It's, uh... Difficult to do that. Uh, right, so I did it, so I press on Y... And... It did work! Wow! Okay, nice! I didn't expect it to work that easily, but yep, it does work. Okay, cool! Oh boy. No, oh, my pen. Oh boy, my, my dogs are starting to wake up, so I think it's gonna be about time. Let me just fix this. Uh, right, okay, so... Yeah, I just want to actually load it. And it's actually going to be super easy, right? Yeah, so I just gotta go for each weapon part so weapon part so in the weapon part as in the save object ah crap in the save object dot weapon part so list cycle through that and call set part and set this weapon part so and yeah that should really be about it with that it should be saving automatically and actually I don't need the yeah I don't need the name I just need the weapon part so so I can actually get rid of this. And the JSON probably still works, so I don't need name, I don't need these things. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Do you have to master data structures and algos for game dev? Uh, not really, I mean, definitely helps to know, but... Uh, load any, there you go, then load, so I can put something completely different. And then I load, and there you go, does load. Alright, awesome, great, it works. Uh, so yeah, data structures and algos, it does help to know them, but yeah, you don't need to. I mean, if you ask me to define what is a bubble sort or quick sort or any of those things, yeah, I couldn't tell you. I really don't know the... I know how to sort things, but I don't know the name behind the algorithms. But yeah, so you don't need to know the technical things behind it, but... Uh, but yeah, it does help to know how things work in general, yeah. General tips for using generics or interfaces. I mean, it depends on the context, so... Yeah, it really depends on the context. So, for example, if you want to use... If you want a good use case... Well, first of all, I've got uh, videos on those, so on the generics and interfaces. So, if you want to go look at that. For example, when it comes to interfaces, I've got the... What did I call it? Interact? What did I call that? This one, yeah. How to talk to NPCs, so if you want to see a very specific use of how interface can help you, then this video is great. So it teaches you how to use interface in order to be able to interact, to talk with a person, or push a button, or open a door. So interface are really good for that. And all my videos on my grid system, all of these are really based on using generics for the grid map. So if you want a practical use case of generics, definitely use that. Is Blender best for making your own assets? Uh, it's one of the most widely used tools, so yeah, I do think Blender is really great. I've only learned the base of it, but yeah, as far as I know, Blender is a very good tool, so definitely if you learn about it, you won't be able to do tons of assets. Um, Alright, so yeah, so basically here the system is pretty much fully working, so I can modify all these. Let me just do a bunch more. So just a few more minutes, let me make a few more parts and then I gotta go because my voice is already pretty messed up. Uh, let me do a bunch more muzzles, that should be fun. Muzzle 2 and muzzle 3. Because uh, there are a bunch of muzzles over here, yeah, I got a muzzle break. These don't look really intense. And there's another silencer. So let me go over here on the muzzle, so muzzle 1, okay. So on the muzzle 2, let's go with the last, uh, the last silencer. And on the muzzle 3, let's go with one of these muzzle brakes, let's go with this one. Which is this one, yeah that one looks good, okay. Alright, so down here I just need to add the muzzle and the muzzle 3, just need to add them to the list and don't need to touch the code at all. 
Once again, thank you so much for the super chat. Nice. Thank you. Uh, barrel, scope, grip, barrel, muzzle, one. And there you go, that one. And a nice muzzle break. All right, that's cool. So I can put a bunch of silencers. I can put them nothing and so on. And for the barrel, it can be of any size. So it can be real long. So like this. And a real long stock. There you go. Really long rifle. <laughs> that's nice. I like that. That looks pretty cool. So yeah, then I can press on T in order to save it. And there you go. Let me just copy this. Yeah, we just need to implement some saving onto a file instead of onto a fixed JSON here. But for now, this works. So let me just get rid and only find the JSON. So there you go. Now I can get back to this rifle anytime I want. So. So let's try it out. <clears throat> this game development need math. I mean, you need the basics, but you don't need anything too special. I mean, over here on the making of this system, I really only used math just over here for handling the rotation of the weapon. So everything else really is just logic. There's no, no math involved in any of these. So yeah, you don't need to be a math expert. You see the people at the bottom. Yep, I do, <laughs> which makes it sometimes a bit different, difficult to touch the button. So I load and there you go. Here's my weapon. And I can load something completely different. Then load again. And there you go. Nice. So I got some nice saving and loading. Yep, look at that. The camera. The uh, main camera. Where's my main camera? For the near 0 0.01. There you go. All right. Okay, all right. So I think that's going to be it because my voice is already messed up. And I actually did manage to do quite a lot. I didn't think that I'd be able to to build pretty much the entire system, but turns out that it actually went quite well. So I can modify all these and I can load them, save them and so on. Just need to add all the parts for all the other remaining things, but yeah. In terms of logic, all oh right, I still need the underbarrel and modify the mag and so on, but yeah. Most of the core concept is all over here and it actually looks quite nice. I'm quite pleased with this. Okay, great. All right. Okay. So yeah, definitely stay tuned for the video sometime next week. And the video is going to coincide when this pack is on 70% off. So definitely don't go ahead and pick it up right now. Wait for next week because those should be like this. More live stream for logic tasks. Yep. Definitely. Whenever I got something that I need to do like this. Yep. I will be doing this. Yep. Are you uploading to the channel? Yes, this live stream will be saved and then the final edited video will come out next week. All right, okay, so my voice is really already messed up. So I think that's gonna be it. It's all working good, it's all looking good. All right. Okay, so let me just put on the characters. Just look at my OBS, see how things are going like that. All right, okay, great, so yeah. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you found this entertaining, useful, informative, whatever. <laughs> I definitely would like to do this more often. So yeah, whenever I get the next tutorial that I need to do some research, I'll try to do it on a live stream. Okay, so yeah, once again, thank you all so much for being here. All right, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Friday, the rest of your weekend, so enjoy it. All right, so thanks again for being here. Thanks and bye.